looking at some of these stocks in the sector. So what we can do even is go back to the um, uh, quotes page. Here's what I like to do. Go back to the quotes page, please, and then go up to the upper left-hand corner again and click on that uh, uh, exactly that little wrench button, I think. Is that going to go? And then what we can do is create new watch list. And by the way, when you start doing this stuff, you really start using some of the, um, the tools. Um, and they always, you know, excuse me, excuse me, Matt, here, let's call this, um, call this Big Oil, maybe the watch list name, Big Oil, or is it San Texas, Big Earl. Um, and then go into, just save that for a second, just save that. And then what I want you to do is click on the, um, click the dot right under, right by symbol, click that, and then go to industry, and then manufacturing, and then uh, petroleum refining, and then petroleum refining again, hit enter, and we should see those stocks. This is now a, a oil company watch list. I would go and delete a bunch of these penny stocks just for the uh, sake of argument. You can sort by price. In other words, Matthew, if you click on the last, on the left-hand side there where it says the last column, right there, the last price, if you click there, you see a bunch of stocks with zeros and stuff like that. You see a bunch of NAs down at the bottom. I would delete all those symbols in practice. What you're left with are a bunch of stocks you know, you've got the TSO, Tesoro, that's not bad, but I would stick with the things that are, let's say, you know, VLO, Valero, Sun, uh, British Petroleum. Um, e, what's E? What stock is that? Eh, I wouldn't worry about it. But, you know, um, RDS, Royal Dutch, XOM, Conoco, Phillips, CVX, Chevron, those are the stocks that I would work with. And let's just pull one out. Let's do... Um, COP minus uh, Exxon Mobil. Okay, let's go to charts and let's just test that one out. Excellent. And let's do a COP minus XOM. And you've got it on a minute chart, which is fine. Let's see how we'll see if that pair looks on a minute. Let's switch back over to line chart. Actually, this is kind of an interesting pair. What I like to do with some of these energy stocks is trade them around the Wednesday oil statistic. And, there, and, and if you don't know what that is, every Wednesday at 9.30 Central, so 10.30 your time in Michigan, the um, Energy Information Agency, which I guess is a, is, a, is, a, is a government agency, they release the, the inventory data for crude oil, gasoline, and distillates, as well as the refining capacity of uh, the gasoline of gasoline and, and, and product refiners for the previous week, okay? And you can actually look that up. You, you, if you go to Google and type in EIA, and if it comes up, Energy Information Agency, you look for their special file. And their special file will show you the, the, the builds and the drawdowns in those inventories. Now, energy traders watch those numbers. And especially with crude oil, well, when... It, People started to focus in on it back. Remember the days when crude oil was below eighty dollars when it was around seventy-five? Yeah, I know. Dust off the cobwebs. <laughs> the people started to watch those numbers a little bit more and started to understand what what they what they meant. And now, you know, with crude oil comfortably above one hundred dollars a barrel, it seems like more and more retail traders are watching those those numbers. They certainly um, you see them certainly more in, in the news media now. But when those numbers are elite, okay, sometimes those big oil stocks can start flipping around. And if you have a price in mind, for example, now Matthew's looking at a uh, a one minute chart. Now let's say I'm, I'm not a let's, for the sake of argument here. Let's say I wanted to buy that pair for one dollar. Or one dollar and twenty cents. Okay. Let's say you thought that pair was cheap for a dollar twenty. X uh, Conoco Phillips COP minus Exxon Mobil was cheap at a buck twenty. What happens around that Wednesday oil statistic? 
if you're sharp, okay, is when you see, let's say, Conoco Phillips maybe dropping relative to ExxonMobil, or maybe um, if everything starts taking off, maybe ExxonMobil gets bid up faster than Conoco Phillips. Those pairs, the prices of the pairs, can dip down a lot of times just for maybe 10 seconds. Okay, <laughs> this is really fast stuff. 10 seconds to a really attractive level. Maybe it drops down to a buck 20 or a buck 15. You say, aha, that's because if you're jumping on Exxon Mobil before they start piling on Conoco Phillips. And if you wait two, if you wait 30 seconds and Conoco Phillips starts rallying and the pair goes back to a dollar 40. And I wouldn't trade this pair for 20 cents. Forget that. I mean, unless I was trading 10,000 contracts or something like that, or 10,000 shares. Or something like that. But it's um, watching this stuff around. Again, this is a very energy specific trade. But if you're watching this around the Wednesday oil system, watch this next Wednesday just for kicks. Watch some of the oil stocks before then. See how they trade. See how they trade before the number. See how they trade after the number. And once in a while, and this is not by any means guaranteed you're actually going to make money doing this, but when you sometimes those pairs can be very, very attractive short term when you can get them, when you can put them on for a good price. So, in other words, if you thought you liked buying it at a buck 20 and suddenly it's trading at a buck 10, great, you got to do it. Okay. You're going to hold on to it for longer than a minute, obviously. You can maybe hold on to it for a couple of days. But when your pair is trading, two things. You have to be very disciplined in your trade selection. In other words, you've got to you got to pick a pair that you have comfort with. There are thousands of stocks, which would create tens of thousands of possible combinations. You've got to narrow it down into of the jerk that you're confident in that have decent high correlations that are that have in my opinion I like to see nice oscillations you know what I mean without these sharp breakouts um, or any you know I don't want to see what looks like a trend in a pair okay I'm not a fan of that style of pair training some people are some people like to hold these for longer periods of time. I'm, and I'm going to talk about that in a second uh, regarding option trades. But you've got to be very disciplined as far as your trade selection. You also have to be very disciplined with your trade execution. I cannot stress that enough. Okay? If you, first of all, if you see an opportunity, and this is where pairs trading gets to be a little bit more of an advanced sort of trading tactic, you can't dither. Okay? You can't question what say you can't you can't say, hmm, gee, should do I like it now? Oh, what's going on? Because if you do that, chances are that great price of the pair is gonna disappear before your very eyes and you'll miss the trade. Okay? You have to be aggressive and you gotta get on these trades when you see them. Okay, by the same token you have to be aggressive in taking them off if the trades aren't working. You have to admit you're wrong and move on. Okay. So you know what I would say is if I want to buy this pair for a buck twenty, okay, and I see it trading for a dollar, oh my god, I'm all over it, okay. And great if it snaps back to two dollars, I'll sell it and I'll make more money than I thought I would. If it goes down to you know fifty cents or I see that 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 pair degrading, I'll just close it out and take my loss, okay. 